If you are interested in learning more about Blender 3D, then check out our Masterclass Introductory course available over at our website baileygraphics.com. This course is the perfect starting point for anyone beginning on their Blender journey with over eight hours of content, all for absolutely free. So if you're interested in starting your journey in learning how to use Blender, then check out the link in the video description. Hi guys, for today's daily Blender tip, I'm going to be demonstrating how you can create a cross pattern wireframe. So we're going to be creating basically a fence in this tutorial as an example. And that fence is going to have a cross pattern. Now to do that, we first of all need to create our base object, which is going to be a plane. So we're going to delete the default cube and replace it with a plane object. Next, I'm going to scale my plane on the Y axis by a value of three. So hit S, Y, then free to scale by a value of three on the Y axis and press enter. Then hit control and A and apply the new scale. Next, what we want to do is we want to add some geometry to our plane. So hit tab to go into edit mode. Now, a word of warning, if you're going to subdivide a mesh like this, you will find that the subdivision may not behave exactly how you expect. Now, this is just a single quad, but this quad goes by a three by one ratio. So three on the Y and then one on the X. The subdivide tool is going to mirror this. So for example, if I right click and then hit subdivide, you can see we've subdivided our geometry. But the newly created faces represent the same three to one ratio as the original face. There are going to be a lot of occasions where you're not going to want this. You're going to want to subdivide one by one squares. So in order to do this, make sure that you are aware of exactly how long on each axis your plane is and then add a couple of loop cuts to ensure that you get a one by one ratio before you do anything else or as close to a one by one ratio as possible. So in this example, because I've scaled it up three times on the Y axis, I'm going to want to add two loop cuts. So I'm going to hit control and R, hover up my mouse cursor over and scroll up till I get two cuts and left click, then right click to confirm position. If we hit seven on our number pad and just zoom out a bit, you can see that each of these squares are exactly that, they're squares. They now have that one by one ratio and you can tell that by the squares that make up the blender grid. So now if we select our entire model, and then subdivide, we're able to subdivide in one by one squares, which is exactly what we want for the object that we are looking to create. So I'm going to increase the number of cuts here from one to about 20. You can have as many as you want. And then with the newly subdivided geometry, we're going to unsubdivide it. So we're almost going to do the reverse. To unsubdivide our geometry, we need to come up to our edge menu, come down to where it says unsubdivide and left click. Now at the moment, it looks a little bit weird, especially on this side and this side, but we can fix that very easily by changing the number of iterations. So I'm going to decrease the number of iterations from two to one. And now you can see that we have created that cross pattern for our geometry. 
Next thing I'm going to do is I'm now going to add a wireframe tool to this. So I'm going to go to face and select wireframe. And just like that, we are able to create a wireframe from our original mesh. We can come down here to the operator panel and adjust some of these values. The most important one is probably going to be the thickness value. So I'm going to up that to 0 0.02 to give my wireframe that little bit of extra thickness. If we hit tab to come into object mode and left click, we can see that we now have our fence with its cross pattern. There are a few other things that you could do to add to this. So you might want to add a couple of cubes either side and stretch them out to give your object a little bit more detail. So let's do that now to finish. Add a cube. We're going to actually reduce the scale on the Y value or Y axis and the Z axis and then ever so slightly increase on the X so that it overlaps at both ends. Go into top orthographic view, hit G, then Y, and line it up with the end of our object. So let's actually use a value of three on the Y, then hit Shift D, then right click, then go back to the Y axis and select minus three. And now we have a basic fence object with a cross pattern using the subdivide and unsubdivide tools. The last thing you may want to do here is just join up these three objects into one by selecting them all and hitting Control and J to join.